presentation which is a recording by Dr. Roger Zaldivar. Do you have it or should I play it? You have it with you, Najibar? Uh, I'll play it. No, ma'am. I, I do not I have, have it. Have. Thank you so much, ma'am. Hi, I'm Roger Saldivar, Scientific Director of the Instituto Saldivar in Mendoza, Argentina. Today I'm going to speak about EDOF IOLs. I want to first start thanking Ashwin for his kind invitation. These are my financial disclosures. The first question that we should address is why? Why do we need a different optical approach if we have And the, the answer is very easy. It's if there is a new solution, that's because we have an unmet need. Trifocal levels are great technology and they have proved to be an excellent visual optic with great outcomes and high refractive predictability at all distances, high levels of patient satisfaction and spectacle independence, that's for sure. There's no free lunch and every diffractive optic has more sensitivity to the focus. We have seen this and that's the reason why if we have some refractive error, we will and we must optimize those patients. This is a very updated publication on the topic that Llobet Roussel published last year where he describes 14.3% needing optical adjustment in patients with trifocal eye wells. Another thing that is very important to highlight to our patients in trifocal eye wells is that they have high chances to have to experience visual disturbances at night. And of course, the good news is that most of these patients tolerate well this, but it's something that you must highlight to your patients. Another very important topic is that residual error and dry eye are the two most uh, repetitive causes of dissatisfaction after implantation of presbyopia correcting intraocular lenses. So you better take care of your dry eye or you should pick a better alternative for your patients. If I have to summarize my experience with trifocal eye wells, that is uh, pretty, pretty long because we started very early with this technology, is that it's a very nice eye well for premium eyes with a it's very short landing zone, very picky IOL. So the challenge is what can we do for all those patients that do not fit in this solution, that they have dry eye and stable tear film, or they have high pressure, or that they have some drusens near the macula or in the macula. What can we do for those guys? So we have been using different types of EDOF IOLs with different optical approaches, and I'm going to share some of our experience. They all share something in common. That is an extended circle of least confusion, which, which in other words is a long landing zone, very forgiving landing zone. The first optic that I'm going to describe is the Isopure by BBI. It's mainly based by spherical collaboration. And we know what spherical collaboration can do for us. We have been dealing with this in hyperprolate corneas with hyperopic profiles um, with, with presbylasic. And we know here too that there is no free lunch too. Expanding depth of focus too much might compromise our quality of vision. So where's the limit? As Carolina Mayer Rocha described in his peer review, it's around 0 0.6 microns of spherical collaboration. In this case, Susana Marcos from Spain, that is the creator of, of this optic for BBI, she didn't want to overpass the 0 0.17, uh, less MTF than that. And that's why she uh, could get to that quality of vision. And, and she could achieve 0 0.9 diopters of EDOF, which is quite interesting for a daily eye well. Uh, as, as you can see here, you won't uh, differentiate this with a monofocal eye well. There are no rings or different strength in the optic. And in this case, uh, Rafa Bilbao from Baviera uh, put the first eye wells and did the first study. And he described 
that the post of spherical equivalent was around the first negative, around 0 0.22. This is something that is quite repetitive in all the EDOF. We always try to finish slightly myopic because this forgiving optics is like the best, the, the, the sweet spot. You finish with very nice depth of focus without uh, an important compromise for far vision. This is something that you can you can see in all the EDOF IOLs. My inocular visual acuity in these cases was around 2020, as you can see here, 0 0.01 Lockmar, 0 0.09 at 80 centimeters, and 0 0.12 at 66 centimeters, which is a very nice performance. The quality of vision is something to highlight in this kind of optics. 90.91 do not see any halos at night, and the same amount do not see any glare. And 90.9% do not need glasses at distance or intermediate vision. 54% were able to function comfortably without glasses at near vision all or most of the time, which, which is very, very interesting for daily functional vision. Another optic that we have a lot of experience is the this asymmetric optics um, called Comfort. It's a refractive IOL with 1.5 diopters of asymmetric uh, inferior power. As Gerd Offar has shown us in the bench, here you have both focus, the intermediate and the far, both uh, the falsies at the retinal plane with the extended uh, focus. And this is our own data of 30 patients. We have very nice um, results. Very similar, as I was saying, than the isopure in terms of spherical equivalent after surgery very slight myopia after the procedure with the very good far vision average uh, zero logmar, 0 0.27 at 40 centimeters, which is quite acceptable, very similar to the results shown before, 0 0.08 at 60 centimeters and 0 0.08 at 100 centimeters. The VVT is another eye well that we have a lot of experience. In this case, the optical principle is, is quite uh, new or disruptive, uh, they describe this delay in the optical path of light, which stretches uh, the, the, the circle of less confusion at the retinal plane. And if I had to highlight something about the BBT, I would definitely speak about their night vision. It's really remarkable how those patients do not uh, describe anything special at night, very comparable uh, with, uh, with, with, with the monofocal IOL, and this what, is this what has been shown in, in many of the studies. Here we have the comparison, direct comparison between glare, between the BBT versus the Acrisol, where you can see that they mainly have the same phot photic phenomena uh, with no clinical significance on these different models. Reason why? We have been very aggressive in terms of monofocals, uh, mono, monofocality, doing it in, in one eye, even in patients with uh, pleno, as I'm going to show you. This patient, for example, 2020 both eyes, a commercial pilot with a very low OSI, which means that this patient has great quality of vision, 2020 with great OSI, 0.4. And we targeted slight myopia, we finished with 0 0.25 negative and 2020 vision. And this is the, the, the performance in different in the distances. This patient was remarkably good. It's not very typical to have this good uh, near vision. You almost finish around 2040, uh, 2040, 2050, if you do it monocular with those with that refraction. We are now targeting a slightly more myopic uh, to have a little more power for near but look at the intermediate performance this is what this guy needed he needed to be functional uh, in with, with the keyboard in the plane and the, the the guy is extremely happy reason why we are doing it more and more in one eye in this kind of patients and the last uh, thing that i want to share with you to finish on time is the possibility to neutralize higher order aberrations by adding a different strategy that is smaller aperture optics. In this case, we have a bioptics performed by my father many years ago, and I proceeded to take out the first time. I took out the, the ICL, go faster, just uh, 
to respect time. I took out the ICL, you grasp it from the central part of the optics. I performed the FACO and I introduced the, I, the IOL, the IC8 inside the eye, which is the beauty of these optics that you can see in the internal OCT. The beauty is that you can neutralize high, high order aberration. In these patients, most of the time you win lines. It's very good for post refractive, it's my first pick. And as you can see here, you have a very nice extension of the depth of focus, 2020 at 50 centimeters, 2020, uh, 2020 at 57, you see 2020 at 66, 2020, it's mainly a stretch line. It's something that we used to, to experience with the good patient with, uh, with camera in the past, but this much more uh, reproducible and easier, repetitive to do it with intraocular lenses like the IC8. Uh, the, there is around 2.75 diopter of functional range of vision, very similar to the Comfort and to the Isopure and to most of the platforms that are, have an EDOF. That's mainly what they are giving with all the different uh, strategies. To finish relatively on time, uh, I would like to, to highlight that EDOF IOL shows comparable results for this photopsia with enlargement of the focus capacity to monofocals IOLs better than expected visual acuity for intermediate vision and functional near vision. And I do think that this is a valid alternative for patients with suboptimal conditions, mainly unstable tear film, glaucoma, macular conditions. And the question that I want to post uh, for you guys tomorrow in India is, can monofocal IOLs really replace definitely by this improved technology? Thank you very much. And um, I would love to be there with you.